What's up, everybody? This is episode nine of Ball Sports. I'm your host, Brandon, again, uh, giving you a couple updates throughout the sports world and just kind of giving you my opinion on uh, certain things that's going on. Um, I got some UFC news, boxing news, NFL, NBA, and then I got some big three news at the end. Um, so make sure you tune in and watch the full video. Uh, we'll start off with UFC 241. Daniel Cormier lost to uh, Stipe Miocic in the fourth round uh, to KO or TKO, I'm pretty sure. Um, Cormier didn't look bad uh, leading up until those moments. Um, he was a little fat, flat-footed on the ground um, with a striking. He didn't really do a lot of movement, and uh, I feel uh, that was his demise at the end of the match. Um, and that's why Stipe uh, caught him in a bad position at the uh, fourth round and uh, finished the fight. Uh, I don't know if Daniel Cormier will retire. Uh, I didn't think that he lost very many steps in his fight besides uh, some cardio, which could be fixed. Uh, and He's a bigger dude, so he's not going to have a lot of cardio to begin with. But uh, I feel like Cormier can still fight. And um, from the words that he put out after the fight, it didn't seem like that he's going to be fighting much longer or uh, if ever again. So uh, best wishes to Cormier if he decides to retire. Uh, he's a great in the... Great in the sport, um, one of the best wrestlers that the UFC has ever seen, um, and he'll definitely be missed. His presence will be missed um, throughout the UFC community. Uh, we got Nate Diaz returning to the UFC and beat Anthony Pettis, who is no scrub. Pettis is a uh, Pettis was pretty good for a long period of time. Uh, he's just had his kind of um, he's had some downfalls here recently and lost most of his uh, last fights after going on a tear. Um, Nate Diaz, who's been on a three-year layoff, came in and uh, dominated Anthony Pettis. Uh, pretty sure the striking uh, the striking difference was like 210 to 80 uh, with Diaz's favor. So uh, that shows you right there that he, uh, he was just tagging Pettis up the whole fight. Um, and it was really a one-sided victory, so it was good to see Nate uh, to get back into the octagon and um, get him a win. I'm sure he'll be back uh, for another good fight and uh, he'll put on another great performance for us. Uh, Paulio Costa beat Yoel Romero um, in a close, close fight. I thought Yoel was going to win it, but uh, I guess I didn't realize how good that, that uh, Paulio Costa was. So uh, shout out to him for the good fight against a good opponent. Um, and I'm looking forward to see him back in. Uh, we got UFC 242 that is coming up. Uh, Khabib versus uh, Daniel Poirier, uh, or Dustin Poirier. Um, I feel Khabib will win that one. Khabib, uh, he's undefeated for a reason, and um, he should make a short work of uh, Dustin Poirier. Um, McGregor says he isn't retiring. Um, he wants a comeback. He's aiming for his comeback by the end of the year. Um, I don't know how well that's going to work, considering we're in the eighth month already. But um, he wants he wants a fight by the end of the year, and he wants to fight... Uh, Khabib again, and he wants to get his title back. Uh, I think Khabib will make work of uh, McGregor again. Like I said once again, Khabib's an animal on the mat as far as wrestling that nobody's hardly ever seen in the UFC. Uh, and he even held his own uh, striking with McGregor in the last fight too. So uh, I think he beat McGregor, and he's worried about other things now. Um, now, will that fight happen again or not? I don't know because it will make a lot of money um, considering what happened after the last fight and uh, how much animosity and uh, how the press conferences will be against his, them two opponents. Um, will definitely be something interesting to see. And I would pay and watch the fight again um, if it did happen. So I, I won't leave it, uh, leave it impossible because it could happen again. They'll make a lot of money off of it. Um, I'm waiting for the next John Jones fight. Um, I don't think he's signed any contracts right now or anything. I really like watching John Jones fight. Uh, he's an animal every time. Whoever he goes against, uh, big, small, you know, um, his toughest fight was with uh, Gustafson. But uh, I'm waiting. To, I'm waiting to see John Jones get back in the octagon and uh, whoop some more people. That'd be nice. Um, we'll move on to boxing news. I just kind of got a couple things. Uh, no really news. Just kind of a couple topics I wanted to talk about. Um, Manny Pacquiao, uh, he hasn't signed a new fight contract. Uh, if you're asking me, I feel his, uh, next opponent should be Sean Porter, um, or Floyd Mayweather. Uh, and why I say Sean Porter, Sean Porter's a similar type of Keith Thurman, knockout power type of one punch, uh, you know, and changes the whole fight. And, uh, I feel like that'll be a really good fight for Pacquiao and I'll really test his, uh, really test his strengths as a boxer because uh, Sean Porter's no scrub and uh, 
he he's whooped a lot of people. I think Sean Porter's thirty two and one, I think, or something like that. Um, so definitely be a good fight to see him and Manny go at it again. And uh, of course, everybody wants to see a Manny Pacquiao and Floyd fight again. Um, everybody felt like that uh, fight was a little bit of a letdown, and uh, I'm sure everybody would like to see a rematch again. Um, I've said this before, but if you ask me, Pacquiao wins uh, if him and Floyd fight again. Um, but that's just my opinion. Um, we'll move on to Fury and Wilder too. Uh, that's another one that I'm overhyped about seeing. Fury versus Wilder is going to be a great boxing match. Uh, it'll be one for the ages. Uh, both very competitive boxers. Uh, a lot of respect between each other, but they don't necessarily like each other. Two very different styles of boxing. Um, their first match ended in a draw, which you could argue that Tyson Fury won. Um, despite the two rounds or the two knockdowns that uh, Wilder got at the end of the fight, um, you could say that Fury won that fight. So it'd definitely be a a good fight to see them go at it again. Uh, Ruiz and Joshua rematch. Uh, I just seen a little bit of this. I don't think this is gonna happen. Um, Ruiz beating Joshua was kind of a flaw. Uh, Joshua Joshua wins that fight eight times out of ten, most likely. Um, Joshua is a bigger fighter. Um, he's he's a better fighter, if you ask me. Um, but Ruiz was the better man that night, and he was the better fighter that night. And uh, Ruiz got his championship belt, and uh, he's moving on to bigger and better things now. I don't think he's going to backtrack to go fight Joshua again, especially when, uh, if you look at the statistics, he's probably going to lose that one if they fight again. Um, so I think Ruiz is ready to move on. Um, congratulations to him on making the world uh, heavyweight champ. Uh, I'm not sure which championship it was, but congratulations on him for being the first Mexican heavyweight um, to obtain a belt, I'm pretty sure. Um, but that's all I have for boxing news right now. We'll move on to the NFL. Uh, we had a couple things going on in the NFL this weekend. Um, we'll start off the Antonio Brown helmet situation is ridiculous. Um, you know, this guy's an amazing football player, but uh, he needs to quit talking and he needs to get back onto the field. Uh, Certain things like this and him talking out against Big Ben and talking out against the Steelers organization is very unprofessional. And uh, what he's doing right now is very unprofessional. Uh, I just don't see uh, where this is going to go and uh, when this is going to be resolved, honestly, because it doesn't look like Antonio Brown's letting up anytime soon uh, as far as the helmet situation goes. Um, we'll move on to Rob Gronkowski. Uh, Rob Gronkowski has been retired. Or Rob Gronkowski has been retired for about a year now, I think, and um, he's been through a lot of pain. He had a lot of injuries. If you know his career, he was constantly fighting injuries, uh, some type of back pain or leg pain. Um, he's endorsing CBD in the NFL, and it sounds like he might return to the NFL one day um, if his health keeps up with him. Uh, he sounds like, you know, he loves the game of football and uh, he would love to get back in it, but he doesn't want to endure the pain uh, that comes along with playing the sport, which is understandable. Um, a lot of people uh, here recently have been retiring at, uh, in their 30s, you know, in the NFL uh, due to a lot of injuries happening, a lot of injuries were uh, occurring throughout their uh, career. So Gronkowski is another one. He's endorsing CBD in the NFL, which is for uh, pain management for him makes sense uh but i hope to see rob gronkowski get back into the nfl one day he was a, a tremendous tight end for a tremendous team um he kind of shaped the way nfl uh kind of uses their tight ends now and uh what you're kind of looking for in a tight end so uh best wishes to rob, Gr rob gronkowski in retirement and uh i hope the pain man pain management and everything is working out for him and uh, he continues to live a long, healthy life. Uh, Rob Gronkowski deserves it. Um, Seahawks looking good in the preseason. Uh, Paxton Lynch and Geno Smith are our backup cute quarterbacks, um, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, I like both of them. Really, you could run either one at the two or the three, and uh, I really wouldn't have a problem with it. With Russell Wilson being the starting quarterback, obviously none of them are really going to uh, see time on the field. But it's good to have a... Somebody like Geno Smith, especially, who's proven to be a good NFL quarterback, um, backing up someone like that just kind of gives you a reassurance uh, factor in case your uh, quarterback was to go down or something. Um, my uh, One of my things, I, I like Lamar Jackson. He plays for the Ravens. He's a starting quarterback. Um, 
I think Lamar Jackson, despite uh, a lot of the running backs, or <laughs> not running backs, running quarterbacks have a hard time in the NFL, uh, especially after a while when defenses find out how to control them and what they're not good at. But uh, I think Lamar Jackson's wired a little different. I think he really will have a successful NFL career. Um, so just watch out on that. Um, and I couldn't forget about the big news, uh, Andrew Luck retiring in the preseason. He retired this weekend um, in the middle of a game. Jacoby Brissett is set to take over for the Colts. And uh, Indy booed Luck on the way out, which uh, I didn't think was really um, professional. Uh, Luck's been through a lot um, in Indy as far as taking injuries. Uh, he He's well involved in the community. Um and it was sad to see Luck retire at such a young age. I know a lot of Colts fans uh, had a lot of uh, high hopes for him, and they exp they thought he was their next Peyton Manning. Um, and it surely seemed like it in the years uh, before he got injured or took all those injuries. Um, his first year, uh, they were the year before Luck came in, the Colts were two and eleven. Or well, they had only won two games that year. And when Luck came in, they had won eleven the next season. Um, Luck was really making changes for the Colts organization, and it's very sad to see such a young guy go out at such a young age. And if you see his press conference, um, you can tell it was, wasn't a decision that he wanted to make, but he felt like uh, it was the best decision for his body and the best decision for uh, him and his family for him to move on with his life. Um, best wishes to Andrew Luck. I know a lot of the Colts fans aren't really uh, happy with him right now. Um, but uh, Andrew Luck was a was a star. We only got to see him for a little bit, but uh, he was a shining star, and uh, he could have been one of the greatest QBs of all time. And uh, sad to see him go out with injuries like that uh, due to whatever reasons, whether it was the Colts not giving him enough protection, whether it was his flaws as a quarterback taking too many hits and not sliding. Um, still sad to see Andrew Luck, and I know that all the Colts fans are uh, – completely drained of hope right now with Andrew Luck being gone at such a uh, sudden it just happened so suddenly it seemed like uh, a month ago or two months ago he said he was ready for the season he couldn't ready he couldn't wait to uh, get back onto the field and uh, here we go a month or two later and he's retiring from the NFL so it was very sad to see um we'll move on to the NBA uh I want to talk about my thunder I feel the uh Oklahoma City Thunder should still be a um should still be a decent team. They have Steven Adams. Uh, if Andre Roberson comes back, he's a great defender. Dennis Schroeder's still on there. Shy Gillius Alexander. Um, Gallinari, who's kind of an older player, but he's still uh, productive. I think OKC will still be a decent team, roughly around the upper 30s, mid-40s wins. Um, Chris Paul's still on there, so uh, maybe him and Adams can mesh a little bit. Uh, but I still think OKC will be a, a little bit good, uh, so I'm uh, I'm gonna be watching them this year and seeing what their kind of their plan is for the next few years. Um, I feel Westbrook and Harden will be special. Uh, I know I say this all the time. Uh, these guys are the only only two MVPs to be playing on the same team right now. Only two guys to have uh, 55 points and a triple double. Um, these guys are just crazy athletes. Uh. Some of the best, Westbrook's won the scoring title uh, twice now, so, um, you know, they're they're prolific ex uh, scorers, and uh, I expect them to go crazy together this year. Uh, they have plenty of team chemistry. They've known each other for years. I expect Harden and Westbrook to do good this year. Um, DeMarcus Cousins' injury, that thing's sad. Uh, it's sad to see DeMarcus Cousins go down like that. A guy who uh, a couple years ago, you argued, could have deserved a max contract in the NBA is now um, on the sidelines for the rest of the year, and uh, he'll look to rebound next year and uh, sign with another team. He's only under a one-year contract uh, with the Los Angeles Lakers, who he didn't even get to play a game for. So um, we'll move on. Jeremy Lin signs with the Beijing Ducks. Um, seems like what he was scared about actually happened. Uh, he posted about how he had hit rock bottom because he didn't want to uh, – or because no NBA team wanted to sign him. Um and it seems like uh, those fears came true, sadly, for Jeremy Lin as he signed uh, overseas with the Beijing Ducks. Um, we'll see if he makes an NBA comeback. I think he can still play in the NBA. Uh, he's very smart, got a good basketball IQ, um, and I think he'll be back in the NBA uh, before long. Um, USA team, 
kind of sad to see the USA team this year. Uh, they took their first loss in 13 years, um, which was crazy. A lot of the stars didn't show up to play for Team USA this year. Um, and uh, so uh, they took their first loss in 13 years. I think it was to Greece. Uh, I expect them to still win the uh, World Cup or whatever, but they're uh, they're not as star-studded as they usually are. Um, Dwight Howard signs with signs with the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, I don't know how that fit's gonna work. Uh, Dwight, I feel like is on the back end of his career, and um, I'm not sure how well that'll work out for him. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I hope it does, and I hope uh, him and Braun and Anthony Davis can all um, mesh well together and. Uh, you know, get uh, plenty of wins and move on to the playoffs. And, you know, hopefully Braun can get him another championship and uh, Dwight Howard can get him a championship for the first time. Um, but we'll move on from NBA news. I got Big Three news. Um, if you don't know the Big Three, it's a basketball organization founded by Ice Cube. Um, basically, old, uh, older, retired players from the NBA or uh, people who just aren't at that athletic ability anymore. Um, they go play in the Big Three. Um I want to give you a couple, uh, a couple of the awards that were given out this year, um, and let you know that the playoffs are starting next week. So uh, make sure you tune into that. Um, I'll, I'll be rooting for Tri State, but uh, we'll move into the awards. Joe Johnson, former uh, Miami Heat player, I think, won a Big Three MVP. Lisa Leslie won a Coach of the Year for the Big Three. Nate Robinson wins Fourth Man of the Year, uh, Fourth Man because they only play uh, in threes. So, uh, Nate Robinson, it would be uh, equivalent to the sixth man in the NBA. But um, Will Bynum wins the too hard to guard, uh, basically being the hardest person to defend off the dribble and things like that. Um, Amari Stoudemire, who's still a great player, arguably could still play in the NBA. Um, I think he's eyeing for an NBA comeback. Uh, Amari Stoudemire wins Defensive Player of the Year. So, that'll be... uh, That'll be interesting to see if Amari gets back into the NBA. I definitely think he belongs. Um, yeah, but like I said, uh, the playoffs start this weekend, I think. Um, and it'll be interesting to see uh, how all that pans out. I'll be rooting for Tri-State with Nate Robinson. That's my favorite uh, favorite uh, NBA player slash big three player. Um, but uh, we're coming to the end of the episode. Make sure you follow me on all social media. I'm on Instagram at BallSports2. I'm on Twitter at BallSports02. Uh, make sure you like and share and comment on the video. Uh, it means a lot to me, and it does a lot with uh, making this channel go and uh, progress. So uh, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Uh, I'll be back next week with another episode.